earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Thank you for joining us this morning for Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church. We worship, we pray that you get something out of the service. Again, welcome friends. Uh, we thank God for your presence. And as we delve into the Word of God, we want to consult God about God's Word. So let's pause for a word of prayer. God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your presence. And God, we thank you for your power. God, we ask now that you uh, lift up your countenance upon us as we uh, prepare to engage the Word of God. Lord God, we pray that someone's life is changed because they tuned in today to hear the Word of God. God, we pray that this Word is a Word of encouragement. God, we pray that this Word is a Word uh, of inspiration. Lord God, we pray that this Word evokes someone to live a life that is pleasing before your sight. Lord God, we pray that as we stand here uh, prepared uh, in uh, the virtual world, Lord God, we pray that this word touches someone uh, in the world of reality. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, God, be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength, our strength my Redeemer, our Redeemer, and let us all say virtually and together, amen, amen, amen. Brothers and sisters, if you would, go with me to the book of Isaiah. Very familiar passage of scripture, very familiar passage of scripture. I think this is one of the most uh, inspiring and inspirational scriptures uh, in all of the Bible. Uh, this is Isaiah, the 40th chapter, and the 31st verse. Uh, Isaiah, uh, the 40th chapter, and the 30th, 31st verse. And it reads like this, and I'm sure all of you uh, at home or wherever you may be, you can quote it with me. So let's say it together. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Brothers and sisters, just for the time that we share together, if you'd allow me to tag this text in this way, there is worth in waiting. There is worth in waiting. Why don't you, uh, as you social distance between your brother or your sister, why don't you turn to them and say, there is worth in waiting. Pleasant parishioners and partners of PG, we must understand that waiting is a part of the divine process that God uses to help guide disciples toward Christian maturation. Therefore, waiting is one of many phases believers endure in becoming what God desires for us to be. It is also important to understand that in our waiting, God enables us with power and with the power that we need to commence, to continue, and to complete the course that God has set before us. And brothers and sisters, I'm persuaded that that's why Paul said, uh, he said at the end of his coursework, as he had been empowered by God to complete it, he says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept my faith. And my brothers and sisters, 
waiting on God, when we must understand, as we wait on God, we trust God, because when we wait on God, we have become empowered by God to complete our course. God empowers us to become faithful, to become faith-filled, and to fulfill our course until the finish. Yet as we give consideration to this particular text, although we have resolved that waiting is necessary for Christian maturity, and although waiting is necessary in developing strong discipleship, it does not dismiss the reality of angst, apprehension, and the anxiety of waiting. And brothers and sisters, neither does it divorce us from the unnerving, unsettling, the unsure, uh, the uncertain, the unresolved, unanswered problems that ye, we yet endure as we anticipate God's intervention on our behalf and God's intervention in our lives. God, I'm waiting, but my cancer results still came back positive. There's someone who is here who has been trusting in God, but yet their trust in God has not yielded the fact that they don't face problems. And although we are obedient to God in our waiting, we must learn that obedience is no guarantee of being spared of adversity. Being obedient to God does not mean that you will never experience headache. Uh, oh, being obedient to God does not mean that we'll never experience heartache and sometimes heartbreak in our lives. Being obedient to God does not exempt us from trouble. And that is important for us as uh, believers who are growing to understand that in this life, brothers and sisters, we must understand that although we are obedient to God, you've got to understand that you'll experience some hiccups in life. Being obedient to God, again, does not exempt us from trouble, trials, tears, nor tribulations. We must understand that obedience to God, it begins our walk with Christ. Uh, it, 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 of our course begins with saying, of course, to God in obedience, but it does not end there. So what I share with you, brothers and sisters, on today, that a thorough walk with God includes some uphill journeys from time to time. Uh, a thorough walk with God, brothers and sisters, it means that sometimes, every now and then, you might have a trek through uh, the valleys of life. Sometimes a thorough walk with God, it means you may experience sunshine and rain. A thorough walk with God means that life is not always a flower bed of ease, but sometimes we'll face some problems in life. A thorough walk with God, brothers and sisters, means that we will face some bumps and some bruises, knowing and understanding that a thorough walk with Christ and a thorough walk with God, it causes us to grow, to strengthen us, 
to build endurance and to, uh, brothers and sisters, develop flexible, uh, a flexible spirituality. A thorough walk with God for a believer helps us to grow, and brothers and sisters, it helps us to grow from that place of spiritual infancy and mount up at some point on our walk with God on wings as eagles. Nevertheless, as we take Notice to this particular pericope, and as we look at this text, Isaiah counsels us uh, that uh, as we encounter the many vicissitudes of life, he reminds us that although, brothers and sisters, life wears us, and although life wearies us, the encouragement about this text is, it, it comes, it, it, the encouragement comes in knowing that even though this life wears us and wearies us, the encouragement comes that God still strengthens and sustains us. I think I need to say that again. Brothers and sisters, understand that although this life, although this walk and this short sojourn with the Savior, it might weary us, it might wear us out, but what blesses me that even though it might weary us and wear us out, uh, the walk with Christ, it still sustains us and it still strengthens us. Brothers and sisters, understand that although uh, the tough or, or the going gets tough, you've got to understand that the tough through the power of God gets going. In the text, it says they that wait. In the New uh, Living Translation, uh, it says they that trust. Uh, one of the Hebrew and Aramaic words used in the original text is kava. This word, like many of our English words, is a homograph. It simply means a word that spells the same, but it has two different meanings. And one uh, of the meanings of kava, it means wait. It means to endure through Tension. I wish I had some virtual amens uh, in the world today. Brothers and sisters, what I'm saying to you is that when uh, Isaiah says they that wait on the Lord, he's talking about waiting uh, through tension. And he's talking about when you wait through in uh, when you wait through tension, God helps you to build endurance. Furthermore. One of the alternative meanings of the word kava, if you did a little bit of research in Logos or your Bible commentary, uh, brothers and sisters, it has a reference to a rope. It means to weave or to tighten or to stretch a rope. And when you weave and tighten and stretch a rope, it becomes a strong cord or it becomes a strong strap, if you will. Brothers and sisters, a rope or a strap's uh, strength comes from being made by many strands. In here, y'all, and help me preach this thing. A piece of string cannot lift much weight because it does not have the indomitable capacity to handle the weight of the load, but a piece of rope can lift hundreds of pounds if you got a strap that is made up of many strands. Uh, brothers and sisters, it can bear a heavy load. Case in point, the other day, brothers and sisters, my children were worrying the stew out of me and I decided to buy them a trampoline. 
And then, brothers and sisters, the trampoline, not only did it not come with English instructions, but brothers and sisters, they did not tell us that it would take so much strength to bring the springs to the clamp. So brothers and sisters, I started to worry and I said, well, wait a minute, let me work smart and not hard. So therefore, I got a strap and the strap was called a ratchet strap. And I had to tie the ratchet strap around the trampoline and I had to use the ratchet strap. And because the ratchet strap was made of a whole lot of strands, it began to pull the trampoline together and it began to do the work that I never would have been able to do. So what I'm sharing with you brothers and sisters is that when uh, you have the Lord on your side, when you trust in God, when you rely on the Holy Spirit, the Lord gives you strength that you would not have otherwise had. Brothers and sisters, again, uh, uh, the rope's strength comes because there are many strains. And when a rope lifts or pulls a load, it stretches a little while it is working. And as it stretches, the individual strands are pulled closer together. I wish I had some help in here. While the stress is on the rope, the individual strands work together to lift the entire load. I'm talking to some church today Sometimes God has to stress us in order to be able to test us. I'm talking to Pleasant Green and a whole lot of churches today. Sometimes God has to put us under a certain amount of stress in order to be able to test us. And many times God has to be able to stress us to get the best out of us. Sometimes God has to put you in situations to stress you to get the best out of you. It wasn't until you got that pink slip on your job that you finally got down on your knees and began a prayer life with God. I'm talking to somebody today. It wasn't until you got into that car accident that you start seeking the presence of God. It wasn't until you lost a loved one until you start looking at life with some level of seriousness and sincerity and sobriety. Sometimes God has to aggravate you in order to elevate you. Brothers and sisters, all I'm sharing with you today that sometimes God has to put us under a certain amount of stress to be able to get us to be blessed. So, the believer's strength comes through being tied up. The believer's strength, I wish I had a band in here today because I'd go for it on this morning. Brothers and sisters, sometimes we have to be tied up. Sometimes we have to be tangled up. Sometimes we have to be knotted around. Sometimes we have to be woven in with the Lord. The old Baptist fit says the theological thrust pushes this way. It says that I'm wrapped up, I'm tied up, I'm tangled up in the spirit of the Lord. And when I'm wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in the spirit of the Lord, the world cannot do me. Ah. Uh. No harm. I'm done today. Uh, but brothers and sisters, what I want you to understand and all I'm saying is uh, that we need a, a rope in our lives. We need a rope and the rope of our lives gains strength by being woven. And the, the, the rope uh, of our Christian walk gains strength by being twisted and tightened and bound together with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
what I share with you, brothers and sisters, the more strands in a rope, the stronger the rope becomes. The stronger the rope becomes and the more likely uh, a rope can endure the weight of its load. Therefore, it is my deduction here that the only way we can endure is that we've got to have enough strands in our rope to tie up with the Lord. Somebody may be saying, well, preacher, uh, what are you saying? Therefore, we must ask God to give us more strength in our rope. We must ask God to give us more trust in his holy word. And brothers and sisters, a few strands that I want to recommend to you, you've got to have a little bit more of faith. Uh, Hebrews 11 and 6 says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. We ought to not only have a little bit of faith, but we've got to learn how to seek God. I wish I had some help in here. We've got to seek God. Uh, the word of God shares with us, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of him or them that diligently seek him. And brothers and sisters, I'm getting carried away, but we've got to have love. Mark 12, 30 through 31 says it like this, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of thine heart, with all of thy soul, with all of thy mind, and with all of thy strength, this is the first commandment and the second is that thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is no other commandment that is greater than this. I wish I was in the church today with all of the pleasant parishioners because I feel it today. I feel like going there. Brothers and sisters, when you finally get all of your strands you have to tighten them up and hold on to God. One old song says, uh, and you know, y'all know I'm an old Southern boy and I was raised on quartet singing one of the canon spiritual songs. It says, if you've been sick and you can't get well, tighten up the rope and hold on. When trouble presses you down, Tighten up the rope and hold on. When you tried at first and you don't succeed, have a little faith. Tighten up your rope and hold on. All I'm saying to you today, I wish I had just a little bit of hammer, a little bit of organ, or just a C sharp, and I go there. But brothers and sisters, I don't have that. But so all I tell you. Brothers and sisters, is to trust him. Trust God. In your virtual world, trust God. Proverbs 3 and 5 says, trust in the Lord with all of thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding, but in all of thy ways acknowledge God and God will direct your path. You've got to have sometimes some blind faith. I remember taking my children to the Universal Circus and brothers and sisters, I saw some trapeze artists and they were jumping and they were reaching out and brothers and sisters, they had faith that they would catch the end of the rope and the rope would take them to the other side of the ring. All I'm saying to you is, brothers and sisters, that you sometimes have to have some blind faith. After Isaiah makes certain for us that we must endure, he then points us out and he points us to something miraculous. And something miraculous will happen when we begin to trust God. If you look at just that text, because 
what he shares with us before the text end. He says that we live in a world, we live in a society where young men will fall. All of us will utterly fail. There will be folks that will give up the faith brothers and sisters, but what he says that if you continue to trust God, if you continue to wait on him, if you continue to follow him, if you continue to stay focused on the Lord, there are some things that Isaiah promises us that will happen. One of them is, he says uh, that he'll renew our strength. Now, brothers and sisters, I'm done now, but I want you to understand that the Lord can renew your strength if you trust in him. Tell your virtual visitor, your neighbor, that sometimes God has to do something to us in order for a miracle to happen in us. This text also suggests, and I'm done now, this text also suggests to us that all of us will not finish our course in the same way. All of us. And that's why it, 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 it pains me to see believers on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, uh, the, it pains me to see us as believers talking about each other's different levels of faith. All of us will not reach the finish line in the same way. Some of us will reach the finish line as we're soaring. Sometimes God reaches us and we find ourselves in the jet stream of the Holy Spirit and we're soaring high. Some of us, brothers and sisters, may have experienced life in such a way where we don't have the spiritual wherewithal to soar through the finish line, but some of us will walk through the, some of us will run through the finish line. God will give you the power to run through the finish line, but then some of us have experienced life in such a way that we will walk through the finish line and not be weary. Again, what this text suggests to us as we close, that not all of us will finish our course with the same level of energy. Isaiah mentions that the strength of an eagle's wing will lift us high above the earth. And not only will it lift us high above the earth, it will sustain us to be able to run in the midst of trouble. It will sustain us to be able to walk in the midst of adversity. And brothers and sisters, the trust that we have in God will sustain us to be able to meet God at the finish line. The door of the church is open. The door of the church is open. Brothers and sisters, uh, if you desire to be a missionary Baptist church, you can send an email uh, to ghpruitt at gmail.com or you uh, can reach out to someone who you know is a member of Pleasant Green. And if you send us an email, we will give you a response within 48 hours. We are thankful for you and God bless all of our visitors. If you are a guest online today, brothers and sisters, we are a church who is striving to become pleasantly purposeful for all people through five tenets. And reach out to us again. Uh, we will be happy uh, to get back with you within 48 hours. Also, we're thankful for all of uh, uh, all of the uh, pleasant parishioners and partners of PG who have been faithful in generosity. Uh, we thank God for them. We thank God for you. And we want you to continue being faithful in your generosity. Uh, we want to offer you uh, an opportunity for generosity. Uh, you can be generous to Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church in two ways. You can 
uh, give through postage. You can send a check or a money order to Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church at 1220 G.H. Pruitt Place, uh, St. Louis, Missouri, 63113. Or you can give online at www.pgmbcstl.org. Those are the two ways you can continue being generous to the ministry of God through Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church. And brothers and sisters, we are thankful for you and may God bless you. Pleasant parishioners and partners of PG, I pray that this worship service has inspired you, it has evoked you, and it has encouraged you. We want to just pause for a word of prayer as we leave uh, our virtual worship service on today. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of God's glory with exceedingly joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever, until we see each other on next week. Be blessed.